Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley back with another video. This is a follow-up video to the uh, one that I did just a little over a week ago uh, asking people, why do you draw? What is it that primarily motivates you? Um, for whatever creative pursuit is your choice, drawing, um, making music, uh, writing, whatever it is, and oh my goodness, the response that I got as I uh, sat down to make this video, 5,923 <laughs> comments uh, and counting in the comment section of that video. You guys are amazing. They're just, uh, when I reach out to my viewers uh, with a question or for help on something, boy, you really do uh, come through for me. So uh, thanks so much for that. And I went through uh, those comments and found, um, you know, hopefully we have time for like seven or eight of the, the different comments that I saw there. And let's just jump right into it. Um, uh, but before we do, actually, I should explain what it is that you see me working on here. This is a panel from Brody's Ghost Book 4, uh, and I'm sort of tightening up the pencils here, uh, adding things to it before I go in to do ink. All right, enough of that. Let's get into it. Uh, first one here from Sister Allie. I draw slash paint because it's an escape from what my life usually is. It's not like my life is bad, it's just boring. I saw this again and again, this idea of uh, drawing as a type of escape, uh, and I thought that was sort of interesting that for so many people, um, uh, you know, the, some sort of creative pursuit allows you to kind of get uh, get out of your own life, especially sort of a boring life. We saw, I saw some people who had more even uh, intense problems that they were um, uh, dealing with. For example, let me just go ahead and read this one from Draconian Vanguard. I started drawing about, I think, 15 years ago uh, when I moved to a new school. I was being bullied and I used drawing as a sort of escape from that. Um, I thought that was really interesting that, you know, this person had a particular uh, problem that they were facing, bullying in this case, and that uh, a creative pursuit was, um, you know, gave them some release, helped them through that. I love the idea of a, a, a artwork uh, or some sort of creative pursuit being almost a kind of therapy, and I know that it has been that for many people, um, you know, for centuries, really. Uh, and I, it's, what's interesting about this is when I uh, did the initial video, uh, I was really framing it in this very, a uh, fairly narrow uh, way, talking about, you know, do you draw mainly for other people to impress them, or are you um, just a, like a pure artist drawing all on your own? And uh, as I went through these comments, I found, you know, a lot of things that I hadn't thought of, a lot of motivating factors that, that went outside of that whole um, question and so it, it was very educational for me um, to see the variety of responses. Here's one, for example, that it had not really occurred to me, um, and this is from Creative Flow Inc. I draw because I have dyspraxia and have had a tremor all my life, but if I concentrate, I can do it. Um, and I have to admit, I had to look up. Uh, the meaning of dyspraxia, and, and here's what it is if there's any uh, of the rest of you who don't know. D developmental dyspraxia is a chronic neurological disorder beginning in childhood that can affect planning of movements and coordination as a result of brain messages not being accurately transmitted to the body. So uh, I'm really glad um, that uh, that this viewer, Creative Flow Inc., uh, left this comment because, boy, talk about um, uh, drawing having a therapeutic aspect. Here is uh, someone who is truly, in a very direct way, finding that drawing is something that helps with an actual uh, medical condition. And, uh, you know, hats off to you, uh, Creative Flow Inc., for, um, you know, doing your artwork in in spite of uh, uh, the challenges that you have there. Um, let's go ahead and move on to another one. I like this one because it's just so direct. It says, I draw because there are no pictures in my room and I want to wake up every day to something that I created. That's by my guitar solo start and uh, I loved that one the idea of just you know here is some of these some of the, sometimes my uh, thinking about drawing is a little too um, cerebral and sort of like why why am I doing this you know and I loved the fact that that one was more just really straightforward you know like I, I want stuff to hang on my wall <laughs> which I thought yeah that's great let's not forget about that um, 
art can be just have a real purpose like that, to decorate, to be decorative, uh, to make your room more beautiful. So I thought that was, um, I was really glad to see at least one comment like that. Um, let's move on to another one. Uh, this is interesting, and it kind of goes back to that one about the escape, or just the therapeutic one. This from, one from Drag Dramane. I hope I'm saying that properly. I'm not absolutely sure. But um, the comment is, I draw to let out somewhat hostile or extreme emotions. And I thought, yeah, yeah, that's a great use um, for... Uh, art or for creative pursuits. Sometimes people, you know, they're sort of tormented by pretty dark visions of things that would be socially accept, uh, unacceptable for you to be sort of dealing with in the real world. Um, and that art is allowing you to sort of, it's like a valve, you know, letting off steam uh, for some of these dark visions or, uh, you know, you may be even violent impulses that you might have that you, you, you get these things out of your system, right, uh, by way of drawing. Uh, I think that certainly is, uh, is something that people use artwork for. Um, you know, for me, all of this stuff, I kept sort of turning it against, turning it back on myself and saying, well, to what degree do I use art as a way, you know, do, am I a dark, twisted, evil being <laughs> trying to, I'm sorry, it sounds like I'm making fun of it, but do I, uh, do I uh, use, um, you know, my drawing, my storytelling to get stuff out of my system, sort of visions that I have, and, you know, I suppose to a, to a certain extent, I think uh, uh, my stuff is really very much just, um, you know, coming up with a story. It may be, it may relate a little to my uh, own life personally, but um, I don't see it in my case. I'm almost kind of envious of the people who can honestly say, you know, I'm driven to create art, and this is this is coming from the depths of my soul, or you know, I, I have to create art. Um, in my case, I suppose I do have to create art, create art in a way. I mean, I don't know what life is like without creating art. I've been doing it for so long. Um, so maybe I take it for granted, and, and if I were deprived of the outlet, I would come to appreciate the degree to which I am driven, uh, as some of these other people are. Um, let's go on and move uh, on to another one here. Um, and some of the comments were in response to the stuff that I was talking about, and why don't we get into a couple of those, into my sort of little obsessions about why do you draw, um, are you trying to please people, or whatever. And um, this one uh, from Praise the Roach uh, says, I don't think you need to worry so much about being on the people-pleaser end of the spectrum. It's your job. Uh, people don't go to office buildings and sit around in cubicles because it pleases them. Uh, and the, I, I thought that it was very kind uh, of this viewer to, to sort of remind me of the fact that, uh, you know, for me to say I'm a showman or I'm, I'm doing my, my art just to please people, it's coming from this kind of impure place, um, uh, that uh, viewer pointed out, hey, you know, I, this is my job. I have to. Uh, I pretty much have to think about whether people like this or not. Because I'm right, I'm being paid to do this if I want to continue to do this as a job. And yes, that is true. That is true. The funny thing is, I think even for those of us who do uh, one of these creative pursuits for a living, you are always sort of thinking, yeah, but I should still be true to myself and I shouldn't obsess about what other people like. Uh, it's a weird kind of a, um, you know, conflict there almost in terms of uh, we want to do it for a living, but then we also want to be absolutely true to ourselves. And I suppose there are some people who manage um, to have both, you know, that their music or whatever is the purest expression of their artistic impulse. Uh, and yet it struck a chord with the masses. And so they just can, can continue to do what they would have done otherwise. And uh, then people... Uh, you know, people are just into it, and they don't have to alter it that much uh, at all. Uh, let's go ahead and move to the next one here. And uh, I like this one. Very direct. Very bold. I'm not going to lie. I have a tendency to draw things so I can show them off, and I think it's in a majority of us artists. I mean, if you work hard at something, why not show it off, right? <laughs> and I like that. I like this. Like, there's no conflict here. 
there's nothing wrong with showing off your artwork, getting some praise. Um, maybe, you know, and it, the, maybe that's what it's all about for you, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Um, I like that that one sort of deflected the whole, uh, you know, um, wrestling with this issue kind of thing by saying, you know, hey, I don't see there's no problem with it. Uh, loads of people draw to get that pat on the back or whatever. Oh, speaking of which, there was a very nice, um, thoughtful comment here in regards to that. Um, here it is. From Johnny Dystar. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. I know you didn't mean it to be degrading, but wanting that pat on the head has uh, a little more to it than a regressive good feeling you get from mommy and daddy. I think what you're referring to is validation, something everyone seeks in their professional life. And I liked that, sort of pointing out that, you know, just because you're doing something to get um, a positive reaction from people, you don't necessarily have to regard it in this very... Um, negative way of, of saying, you know, oh, the only reason you're doing it is to get a little pat on the head from mommy and daddy, uh, or, you know, in this case, the public at large, that that is a very impure motivation. Um, the way uh, this viewer put it, I think, yes, very much so. Um, people seeking some sense of validation, uh, connecting with other people, there's uh, there's really nothing wrong with that. Uh, hang on a second, I'm going to grab my uh, inking tools because I think it's time to move on to that part of the process. All right, so now I can go in and ink a few of these lines. Just as a little side note, um, uh, a little tip for those of you who are um, creating graphic novels, you may notice that there's kind of a blank space right here. That is because I had done a layout and uh, knew that there's going to be a block of text right here. So I don't want to put too much... Uh, time into inking, drawing that section right there because it's going to get completely blocked over by text in the finished comic. But let's go ahead and continue. Um, I was talking about, um, uh, you know, th this idea of validation, connecting with other people, and that sort of segues nicely into this next comment from Enix Fire. Or is it Anix Fire? I'm not really sure how that's pronounced. Uh, and the uh, comment is this. The real motivation is when a bunch of my artist buddies come together and we all draw for a purpose and I feel like I'm part of something bigger. Uh, so that is a great one, you know, uh, and we do have this idea of artists in isolation, you know, all of us sort of working on our own thing in our little ivory tower. And I love that this comment uh, reminds us that it doesn't have to be in isolation. You can be sort of getting together with friends and uh, drawing in a communal way, um, even if you're all just working on your own individual thing, um, that, uh, you know, that... that that process of, of joining with others makes you feel like you're part of some bigger thing. And there are, even among professionals, sometimes these sort of get-together groups that people will attend somewhere, like at a coffee shop or something, and, and get together and they'll all draw together. I have never really done that kind of thing, I must say myself. I, I guess I am that ivory tower guy off here working on my own. Um, but I know a lot of people do enjoy that communal feeling. Um, let's see, we've got to have a, a one or two other comments here. Um, I liked this one uh, that uh, gets into the idea of, of an artist who's working only for him or herself. Uh, uh, and the comment comes from Saikihe. Sorry, again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing uh, some of these names. Very hard to pronounce. Uh, but the comment is, I'm quite confident in my ability, but I hardly ever show my drawings to anyone. My sketchbook is like a diary. Uh, and I thought that was cool, this idea of um, sketchbook as diary. And I think a lot of people do uh, use a sketchbook that way. And, it, uh, you know, it is in entirely for themselves. Uh, they never show it to anyone. And as I said in the original video, I think there is a kind of real purity there uh, to that kind of work that you know for a fact that you are not allowing... Um, other people's, um, you know, the kind of thing that they like to determine what you draw, uh, or even the imagined uh, reaction that you might get from them. You're just completely, because you, know, you know, you're never going to show it to anyone anyway. Um, there is uh, absolute uh, purity in that approach. I certainly am not that way, um, and um, that's just kind of, the, kind of the person I am. Let me see. I knew I had a 
couple other ones. There were so many, like I said, thousands of comments. It was hard to to uh, whittle them down. Um, but uh, yeah, here's one more. Hang on just a second. Uh, the comment is this. I've always been one who suppressed my emotions, what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking. I stumble over my words, and I can't seem to be able to express myself properly. I find that with art, with my art, I can express whatever I'm feeling that I can't just come out and say. And uh, that is from Azurel Isis. Az Azure Isis. Boy, I'm not sure of my pronunciation on that one. But um, that's a great one about how, you know, especially someone who finds that they, they can't put into words a lot of things, that they're always sort of stumbling over their words and they, they, they can't be as eloquent as they would like to be, that a drawing or, uh, you know, music or some other form, nonverbal um, uh creative uh, outlet allows them to uh, express themselves in a way that they can't, or at least is not as much, as well as they would like to uh, in speech. I thought that was a really a good one. We have maybe space for two more comments. Um, I like this one. I draw because it makes me feel accomplished. Just looking at old sketchbooks and seeing how far I have come is a great feeling. That's a nice one, that idea of, you know, um, any pursuit of any kind, if you see yourself gradually getting better at it, it's a wonderful feeling. Um, and, you know, I've, I noticed that some people were reacting to this uh, question in a way that was sort of like, I draw because I draw, man. Why? You are overthinking this. I do this because I like it. Why are you making it so complicated, man? Um, and, uh, it, yeah, there is. A, it can be annoying when people are sort of like overthinking something. Um, and uh, so uh, I think in a way, when I read this one about... You know, it's a great feeling to, to look back at the old sketchbooks and see how far I've come. I'm a little bit reminded of uh, the idea of, uh, you know, uh, climbing Mount Everest, right? And people say, why do you do it? And they always say, because it's there, you know. Uh, uh, but clearly there's this feeling of great accomplishment. Uh, if you do something like climb Mount Everest, you have um, surmounted some incredible challenge. And I think there's a certain aspect of that to anything. You know, if you start uh, trying to learn how to play the guitar and at first you just completely stink and you can't play anything and then you keep at it and over a period of years not, you, can, you can finally play pretty well, there's just a great feeling there and you don't need to analyze that too much, say, why? Why is that a great feeling? I don't know. He's, it just is. It feels good to become better at something, uh, to set a goal and reach it. These are just sort of basic human things that, uh, you know, you, you really don't need to even question why that feels good. It just does. Uh, just as it uh, feels frustrating to not get any better at something, uh, or indeed, uh, every once in a while, I'll hear from people who feel they have become worse at something, uh, drawing or whatever it is, and, you know, Again, you don't have to ask, why does that feel bad? It just does, you know. Well, one final comment, and I think we'll be done with the uh, uh, this video. And I'm sorry that I wasn't able to get more comments in here. Uh, just uh, uh, an incredible, like I said, thousands of comments to read through. But here we go. This one from Jamie Boy ETF. I draw because it's the only thing I can truly control. Nobody can tell me I'm wrong. Uh, tell me what to draw or how to do it. And uh, I love that. That's a, maybe a nice way to end it on. Um, and uh, in a sense, uh, even for someone like me, uh, I call myself a showman, that I'm constantly thinking of how uh, other people will react on a certain level. It's me. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing it my way, and no one else can tell me. Um, you shouldn't have drawn it that way, you shouldn't have done it this other way. No, I'm just like, this is my world I'm creating here. Brody's ghost. I invented it, you know. Um, and it is, it's, especially if you live in a world in your, um, life where you feel like you lack control, people are bossing you around, uh, things never go the way you want them. When you sit down and draw, or especially, for me, create a story, um, you get a level of control that you will never have in real life. You know, you are, you are orchestra, you know, some people might sing, you're playing God, you know, but, uh, there's just a great feeling with being able to, uh, 
you know, set all of this in motion and, and have nobody telling you um, uh, how you should be doing it or, or criticizing you. Well, I think we've kind of reached the end of uh, this video. I want to thank, again, everyone who left comments. Uh, I hope you found my little response here useful. Sorry I didn't get further along with uh, my inking exercise here, but uh, maybe it was useful for some of you to see uh, to what degree uh, my pencils uh, get a, a little further elaborated as I go along prior to inking. But uh, this one has gone on for long enough, I think. Let's go ahead and lay down the pen. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it useful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.